Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. In today's newsletter, we will have a look at the first results from MIB 626, the super NAD booster that Dr. Sinclair has spoken about in the past, and a study showing that older adults who exercise have higher NAD levels, in fact, almost as high as those in their 20s. First, a disclaimer that in this newsletter, we are sharing some news items and recent papers that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. First, we would like to give a shout out to our supporters who were very generous to buy us coffees. It encourages us to share information on aging research. Thank you so much for your kind support. And we would like to give a special thank you and shout out to Paolo for subscribing for a yearly membership. First, a quick note that Alive by Science have changed their name to Renew by Science. They are offering a limited time 20% discount. Please use our Modern Health Span discount code MHS20 until March the 8th. Thank you for your kind support. This is a write-up of a trial of an NAD precursor, MIB626, from Metro Biotech, a company co-founded by Dr. David Sinclair, and for which he is the chair of the Scientific Advisory Board. One interesting thing is that the study identifies MIB626 as being beta-nicotinamide mononucleotide, just in a unique crystalline structure. NAD precursors have had some good results in animal models, but early clinical trials have had varying results. The processing of the compounds in the body is not well understood. So this trial was to investigate how MIB626 is metabolized in humans. It was a double-blind, placebo-controlled study with 32 overweight or obese adults aged from 55 to 80. They were block-randomized, stratified by sex into one of three groups. These groups were placebo, 1,000 mg once per day, or 1,000 mg twice per day for 14 days. The outcome measured was the level of NMN, NAD, and NAD metabolites in the blood. Just a note on the block randomization, this is where a group is first split up by a factor, then each group is randomized. In this case, it was by gender to ensure an equal split of genders into the three groups. MIB 626 was well tolerated. Blood NMN concentrations after 14 days, as measured by area under the curve, were significantly higher in the treated group compared to placebo. And it was dose dependent, being 1.7 times higher in the 1000 milligram group and 3.7 times for the 2000 milligram group. They did see increases in blood NAD levels and the metabolites of NAD. The changes were not related to gender or BMI. They conclude that the 1000 milligram twice daily was well tolerated and produced a substantial dose related increase in NAD blood levels and suggest further efficacy trials. There was no comparison to other forms of NMN, so it's not clear how much more effective MIB626 is. Raising NAD levels is something that we talk about frequently on this channel. This paper looked at how NAD levels are associated with healthy aging and muscle function. Muscle function declines with age. However, the underlying molecular process of how activity is related to metabolic decline has not been studied in detail. They looked at it in a cross-sectional study, the muscle metabolome of younger and older adults, with the older adults being grouped by physical activity. NAD was the most prominent of the metabolites to decline, as was found in animal models. This was most pronounced in underactive older individuals, whereas trained older individuals had a similar level to that of younger subjects. NAD levels were correlated with a number of steps per day. So suggesting a clear association between NAD levels and health status in human aging. Here are the details from a talk by Dr. Hout Cooper at ARDD 2021. The older adults were aged 65 to 80 and grouped by physical activity based on the number of steps per day. Those doing 13K steps a day as trained, those doing 10K as normal, and those doing around 6K as impaired. Here is the result that they saw in the NAD levels, which were taken from a muscle biopsy. So were the NAD levels in the tissue? 
we can see that the NAD levels of the athletic group are close to that of the young. This is an observational study and not interventional, so it is only showing a correlation, but it is still interesting to see the link between exercise and NAD. Here is a review paper which looks at mitochondria and metabolic dysfunction in aging and age-related diseases. The main author was Dr. David Sinclair. I do not have access to the full paper, but in the key point summary of the paper, they discuss the connectedness of the cellular pathways to mitochondria and the nine hallmarks of aging. They do see that mitochondrial dysfunction is part of aging and it could be amenable to therapies though they are calling for longitudinal human studies, so it may take some time.